here at Johnston Ridge Observatory, we can see where the eruption began on the north side of the mountain. Suddenly, the flank collapsed, creating the largest landslide in recorded history. The entire top of the mountain rushed downslope towards Johnston Ridge at 150 miles an hour. burying the forest. As the landslide split the mountain open, it unleashed the tremendous pressure that had been building within. The blast was a great sideways explosion of rock fragments, ash, and hot gas, and it roared across the landscape at speeds greater than 300 miles an hour. The blast raced ahead of the landslide in the valley below the mountain. Hit the surrounding old growth forest with its super hot stone filled wind. And created three distinct zones. Close to the volcano, including Johnston Ridge, trees caught in the full intensity of the blast were ripped from the ground, shattered and became part of the blast. Farther away, where the blast was less intense, trees up to eight feet in diameter were toppled, their trunks pointing in the direction of the blast. Still farther away, as the blast weakened, its heat was still fierce enough to sear the trees and leave a standing dead forest. Meanwhile, the landslide continued to rumble on, bringing more change to the already blast-affected landscape. At Spirit Lake, where the blast had knocked down trees on the surrounding hillsides, the landslide barreled in. It bounced off Harry's Ridge, plowed through the lake and deposited great chunks of the mountain, called hummocks, in the lake's far cove. As the landslide hit the lake, it shoved huge waves 800 feet up the surrounding hillsides. When the water rushed back down, it carried the trees blown down by the blast and dumped them into the lake. On the other side of Harry's Ridge, the landslide stripped off the vegetation, exposing bare rock. Nearby, at Johnston Ridge, the landslide surged up and over, spilling hummocks across the crest. But the bulk of the landslide was diverted westward by Johnston Ridge and slid into the North Fork Toodle River Valley. The river was completely buried. Under a layer of rock and debris 600 feet deep in places, hummocks were strewn through the river valley. The landslide dam tributary streams that later would form whole new lakes and low-lying areas of this new landscape filled with water to form ponds and wetlands. Then, with the blast exhausted and the landslide rumbling to its end, another part of the eruption gained strength. On the flanks of the mountain, the fierce heat released by the blast swiftly melted snow and glacial ice, creating heavy slurries of mud, boulders, and tree trunks. But the most powerful mud flow poured out of the landslide through the valley of the North Fork Toodle River and flowed downstream for hours, snatching homes and bridges on its way. And there was still more to come. 
the eruption reached its climax in the afternoon when molten rock poured out of the crater, gushing forth great quantities of super hot pumice, gas and ash called pyroclastic flows. They buried the hummocks below Johnston Ridge, forming a smooth plain. As these pyroclastic flows proceeded, they boiled the groundwater beneath the surface, creating trapped pockets of steam that exploded like renegade geysers and blasting craters up to a quarter mile across. Throughout the day, the mountain pumped hundreds of millions of tons of ash into the atmosphere, creating a column above the crater that roiled 12 miles high. Winds carried the ash eastward, turning day into night, blanketing the landscape, and eventually, encircling 